Hello and welcome to this video series on animal nutrition brought to you by Farmers Weekly. I am Janine Ryan, the editor of Farmers Weekly, and during this series we bring you interviews with experts from the Agricultural Research Council about animal nutrition and the role it plays in overall animal productivity. Today's guest is Tokuzan Nadonga, who is a researcher at the ARC. Welcome, Tokuzane. Okay, thank you, thank you, Janine. Can you could you introduce yourself, please? Okay, my name is Toko Zani. My surname is Ndonga. I'm working for Agriculture Research Council under the Division of National Beef Recording and Improvement Scheme. I'm working as a senior research technician. Could you explain to us the importance of the ARC's Beef Improvement Scheme? The scheme uh, is important uh, to assist the farmers in ensuring that they breed with biological efficient animals as well as the high fertility animals in terms of improving their production as well as their businesses. And how does the scheme go about doing that? How does it help farmers? Yes, we help farmers in terms of uh, making sure that they participate in the beef scheme, they do in performance testing and also we share uh, information with them in terms of uh, farmers' days, in terms of training, as well in terms of workshop, that they become a part of bigger picture of beef scheme. And also once they become the participant of the beef scheme, doing various uh, performance testing, we capture their data in our system, which is then later interpreted, in analyzed and interpreted so that it can help them when they are doing selection to select the best performing animals. So for viewers who may not know the terms um, that are used to indicate the performance of an animal in terms of feed efficiency, could you just elaborate on what some of those terms mean? So we have, for example, ADG, FCR, amongst others. So what do those terms mean and why are they particularly used for the measurement in terms of production? Yes, thank you for the question. Yes, efficiency, in short, it refers to the function of input as well as output in the production system. So it's very important for farmer to ensure that uh, their animals are utilizing the feed that they are feeding to the animals in an effective way. That will ensure that they don't uh, experience high cost because in a production system or in a beef environment, the high cost of production will come from feed. So if the animals are utilizing feed efficiently, in other words, they're growing fast uh, by uh, consuming less feed. Those are the animals that we want. So we will talk about terms like uh, ADG and FCR and RFI. If I may start with uh, FCR, FCR refers to the feed conversion ratio, which is the amount of uh, kgs of feed that an animal will consume to produce one kilogram of meat. So it's very important uh, uh, to farmers to know that uh, how much uh, feed the animals are utilizing in order to gain a certain weight is closely correlated to ATG, which is average daily gain, the amount of feed that we'll need to gain uh, some certain kilograms or kg uh, grams per day. Uh, the challenge that we are facing with the feed conversion ratio, which is FCR, is very dependent from the growth, uh, growth rate as well as the body size. So once the animal, even if an animal can have a high uh, feed conversion ratio and we select based on that, that animal turn later, yes, it will consume less feed, but it increases the mature weight of that animal. Once the mature weight is increased, now that animal will become a larger frame and will demand more nutrition in terms of maintenance. So we'll experience high maintenance as a farmer if you select only of FCR. So to overcome that challenge, there is a method of also of measuring feed efficiency, which uh, actually which has uh, taken the beef industry by storm, which means most of the farmers are interested in doing it lately, which is uh, residual feed intake. So for residual feed intake, 
is just the difference between the actual feed that an animal consume as well as the expected feed that we are expecting that animal to consume. So we'll do some various tests and trials to ensure that which breeds or which bulls are better in terms of uh, feed intake because we normally call it a, a net feed intake, that residual feed intake. So an animal that uh, consume less feed but grow more in terms of uh, average daily gain, that animal, we will say it has a minus or it has a negative FCR, which is the animal that we are looking for. So an animal with a positive FCR, it shows that that animal is demanding high maintenance. It's an animal that eat, but also is growing a lot in, te in, in, in such a way that at a later stage, it can be a larger frame animal in terms of body size. So the farmers uh, are advised or are recommended to also ensure that they practice this F uh, uh, RFI, which is residual feed intake. Mm -hmm. We do various tests at the ARC testing centers in all provinces to ensure that we accommodate uh, the various farmers from uh, various provinces. So how is the RFI measured? What, what tests are used to measure it? Uh, with RFI, we normally test the animals at our testing center. Then they will have an adaptation period of 28 days just to familiarize uh, with, the, with the condition because the conditions are under the standardized environment, which is almost like feedlot environment. So the regime, although it's not uh, exactly the feedlot regime, but it, in terms of uh, feed composition, is almost uh, with the feed regime that we are using at feedlot. When the, after the 28 days adaptation period now, they will undergo for a test period of uh, 84 days. So in, in all, which means they will stay at the testing center for 112 days. The time they are uh, actually undergoing the test, we do take measurement of the feed that we feed every day because we must know that what is the daily intake or what is the daily feed intake as per individual pool. So each pool will be given feed in its separa separate feed tro feeding troughs so that in the morning when we weigh the remaining feed, we can be able to determine how much that animal consumed. And every seven days we'll be weighing those animals. Now we can be able to determine to say these are the efficient animals among that group because we do test the animal that are at a, uh, the, or the same age. We normally call them a contemporary group. And is the RFI, how is it indicated? Is it a index? Is it a ratio? How has it shown? Yes, it is shown as an index. Okay. It is shown in, as an index, unlike uh, the FCR. Mm. FCR, because it's a ratio, an animal might have a good FCR only to find that it has a, a low feed intake but higher growth rate that will actually develop at a lesser stage to a, a larger frame animal, which will demand more maintenance in terms of feeding. And moving on to testing that is used by the ARC. So if you look at phase D testing, for example, can you just go through perhaps some of the important phase testing and why they are used? Yes, we do. In identifying the animals that are utilizing feed better, we also have the phase C test. The phase C test, we, know, we do it only at ARC testing centers under the, uh, under the uh, standardized environment. And also we do it in private uh, owned testing centers. So there is a minimum age and a maximum age on arrival for those bulls that will be tested. But it must be, those bulls must be registered. So we don't test commercial bulls. We only test uh, the registered or stud bulls. And the age of that bulls at arrival should be between 151 days and 250 days. They will also undergo the period of adaptation for 28 days and the test period will be 84 days. So while we are doing the, while we are doing the test, we weigh them 
every seven days, as well as the feed that we are, the animals are consuming, we weigh that feed every day. The main reason or the main aim why are we doing that uh, phase C test is to evaluate the feed ratio, uh, the feeding uh, actually, is to evaluate the animals with good feed conversion ratio as well as animals with uh, good uh, average daily gain. We need animals that are very productive when it comes to feed. We also have uh, phase D. Phase D, we do it on farm. We normally call it it's, it's an on farm growth performance testing, where a farmer will just request that they are, uh, his or her bulls uh, will undergo phase D. Then uh, he will send or she will send us an application form. Once that application form is signed, and then we will uh, let the farmer know that they will start the phase uh, D with him. But with the phase D, we have a minimal requirement in terms of the number of bulls that should be tested. We only test if the minimum number is 10 upwards. Otherwise, if it's less than 10, it's not official. So, okay. Yeah. And does that also only apply to stud bulls? We, are, we accommodate the great bull, which means if their parents are registered. But if it's just a commercial bull without any record of its parents, we don't do that phase D. In terms of genetic traits, which genetic traits are important for feed efficiency? Yes, for genetic traits uh, on feed efficiency, we are looking at uh, growth. Because an animal that uh, demand less feed but grow more, it's a, actually it's an efficient animal because feed is very expensive. I think it constitutes around 65% of the total production cost in a farm. So as a farmer, you will need to minimize those production costs in terms of feeding. So those animals that are efficient will ensure that you generate enough profit as a farmer because they are not demanding uh, more nutrition. In terms of grazing also, they will keep the grazing actually uh, condition under minimal uh, condition. And also, we do emphasize also looking at the important uh, traits such as uh, fertility. Also, we are looking at the important traits, which is uh, growth, uh, fertility, as well as uh, reproduction performance of the animal. And do you think one aspect trumps another? So do you think, for example, that it's more important to rely on genetics in terms of feed efficiency or the is it environmental? Is it purely nutrition or does everything work together? Yes, it's very important to actually to select the animals based on their genetic performance. But once we have identified those animals, make sure that the environment also will allow those animals to manifest their genetic potential or their genetic traits. There will be a high correlation or a high interaction between genetics and environment. For instance, an animal can have a good genetic for growth, good genetic for fertility, but now if the feeding doesn't support that animal to express those genetic potential, that animal won't be effective. And also, if that animal is exposed to diseases and also uh, on water shortage, those are the factors that may affect the genetic performance of that animal. Yes, we look at the traits as well as the environment must be conducive to ensure that that animal actually express that to those genetic potential. Thank you very much, Tokuzani. It was okay. very interesting. Thank you. Thank you so much, Janine. It was nice chatting with you. Welcome back anytime. Okay, no, it's obvious. <laughs> yeah.